it's necessary to know idioms and some set phrases that people use in their native languages to better understand their culture and traditions. My name is Alina and today I'm gonna share with you 20 the most common Russian idioms that people use in their daily life. Some of them will be similar to the English ones, but some of them will surprise you. And now let's start. And the first one. Когда рак на горе свистнет. We love this expression. I don't know why, maybe because we don't like giving promises, but this one you can hear a lot from Russians. You can use it when someone is asking you, when are we gonna meet? And you don't really want to meet this person, so you answer, когда рак на горе свистнет. And basically, your answer is never. The similar one will be после дождичка в четверг. Basically, the same meaning, and there is little hope that this or the next Thursday is gonna rain. So again, your answer here is never. После дождичка в четверг. Нет настроения. А когда оно у вас появится? Когда, когда? Когда рак на горе свистнет? The next one. Как снег на голову. This one we use when something suddenly happens and you don't expect it at all. And it's a little bit negative. So you can say, Как снег на голову вчера приехали гости. You didn't wait for them, but they arrived. And here also I want to pay your attention to the word голова. Like I pronounce как снег на голову. The stress is on the preposition на. Actually, the word голова here is not stressed at all. Sometimes it happens in such sad phrases or idioms when we change the stress. So it's really different from the way we talk normally. Basically, if you need to say on head, you will say на голову. So the first syllable of your word голова will be stressed. Here it's different. You just need to remember the pronunciation of this expression. Когда неожиданность падает как снег на голову, нельзя терять время. Okay, the idiom number four. На черный день. Or сохранить на черный день. Probably because Russian people like to save some things for another day. We love this expression. And in this case, черный день, like black day, like the worst day of your life. And that thing that you saved before can make you a little bit happier. For example, you can say, Я сохранил эту шоколадку на черный день. Yeah, maybe this chocolate was really tasty and you decided to save it for another day, for the worst day of your life. It sounds really sad that we say it and that we use it a lot, but don't take it too seriously. Usually we use it as a joke and here it's not really negative. It's not technically the worst day of your life. Оставляя что-то на черный день, вы приближаете его. Okay, the next one. Зарыть талант в землю. I think this one is clear even without explanation. So we can say here. Он мог бы стать великим пианистом, но он зарыл свой талант в землю и бросил музыкальную школу. Может быть, правда мне дано? Много иметь сил, много энергии. И я подумал, что если у меня это есть, то я не, не имею права зарывать талант свой в землю. Then, number six. Раскусить кого-то. This one is more colloquial expression than an idiom, but still we use it a lot. And separately, the word раскусить means to bite something into pieces. And usually it's something hard, like a knot. Uh, раскусить орех. 
but before I said раскусить кого-то, like an idiom. And in this case, as you understand, we're talking about people. So when you say раскусить кого-то, you mean that you figure out or you find out something about this person. It can be something interesting or something a little bit negative. I don't know, maybe some bad secret. So you can say here, я раскусил тебя. And like this, you're saying like, I got you or I figure out what you want or what you think about. Пять простых способов раскусить лжеца. Okay, now let's talk about something positive, because I feel like I gave you only negative examples. This one, быть на седьмом небе отчасти. It's very similar to your idiom, and here we use it the same way, like to be really happy. You can say, я на седьмом небе отчасти. Я была просто на седьмом небе от счастья в тот день и в ту неделю. Number eight. This one is also positive. Выглядеть на все сто. But better use it as a compliment, because if you're saying it about yourself, you can sound a little bit cocky, or people can think that you're a narcissist if you're saying Я выгляжу на все сто. In this case, you can say Ты выглядишь на все сто. And here, people think differently. Сто, like you just cut it there, but you can continue saying сто баллов, сто процентов, сто миллионов. I don't know, but better to just cut it on сто. Ты выглядишь на все сто. Все то, что позволяет звездам выглядеть на все сто. Okay, the next one. Белая ворона. This one is funny, because, as you can understand, it's something similar to your uh, черная овца. For some reason, we changed the color, we changed the animal, like we took the bird. But anyway, it's just the same. So you use it about people that are different from the others, like outsider. Вы когда-нибудь задумывались о том, почему нигде не любят белых ворон? Okay, number 10. Валять дурака. This one we also use a lot. It means to spend or to waste your time doing nothing. And I can say, не валяй дурака, иди работать. Or also, it can be like your English expression, to play the fool. Also, I can use it the same way. Не валяй дурака. And very similar idiom, бить баклуши. This one, I think, is a little bit old. I'm not sure if people now use it that much as before, but still, you can hear somewhere this expression. And it means just the same. Он бьет баклуши целый день. Or он валяет дурака целый день. Вообще, бить баклуши – это валять дурака. Okay, the next one. Мыльная опера. Here, no need to explain, because it's just the same as your soap opera. We can say, девушкам нравится смотреть мыльные оперы. С тех пор термин «мыльная опера» прочно вошел в обиход для обозначения низкокачественных сериалов про любовь. Okay, next one is funny. И ежу понятно. I don't know why we decided to take a hedgehog here, but this expression we, we use when everything is perfectly clear. Or if you're talking about something that everybody knows. So like this you can say ежу понятно, что земля круглая. Like even a hedgehog understands it. И это не радует. То есть уже ежу понятно, что на этой ленте не достичь эффекта, как на гифке. Okay, the next one, тютелька в тютельку. Again, I'm not sure if it's like an idiom, but still people use it as a colloquial expression a lot. And you will use it when you're talking about something that suits you perfectly, or not you, maybe if you're talking about yourself, it can be maybe some clothes. Or also you can talk about furniture in the apartment. 
basically we can talk here about anything that suits something perfectly. So we can say это платье мне тютелька в тютельку. Then, number 15. Зарубить себе на носу. It's simply to remember something perfectly or to keep something in mind. And again, it's a little bit negative, so it can even sound like a threat. So here you can say, Заруби себе на носу. Ты должен быть дома до 12 ночи. That's something that parents can say to their kid. Слушай, Петро, заруби себе на носу. Если ты меня еще раз хоть пальцем тронешь, я тебе не знаю, что сделаю. Понял? Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one. Не по карману. This one we always use when we want to describe some things that we cannot afford. And here be careful with the grammar, because the person who cannot afford something we will use in the dative case, like мне не по карману, I cannot afford it. And the thing that you, not, you cannot afford will be in the basic nominative case, like эта машина мне не по карману, I cannot afford this car. Будапештский отель, естественно, мне не по карману, так что придется поселиться в хостеле. Окей, okay, number 17. Ударить в грязь лицом. This one is just to humiliate yourself. Or if you add не ударить в, в грязь лицом, it's more like to save face. You can use it to wish good luck to someone before some special or important event. Like I can say, удачи на собеседовании. Не ударь в грязь лицом. And pretty similar expression that брать себя в руки. Also, it can be used as the word of support. Or if you want someone to focus or to concentrate on something, you can also use this one. Возьми себя в руки. Не волнуйся. Не хочется ударить в грязь лицом, когда снимаете видео с собой любимым. Okay, the next one. Вить веревки. This one we usually use when we're talking about really spoiled kids who do all they want and their parents do for them everything they want. So like this we can say Этот ребенок вьет веревки из своих родителей. К сожалению, в таком состоянии из мужчины можно вить веревки и делать с ним все, что хочешь. And the last one. До мозга костей. This one we use a lot when we're talking about people who are dedicated or devoted to some idea or principle, like он идеалист до мозга костей. More often also we use it about politics, because usually uh, politicians, they have some strong ideas, strong principles, so you can say он либерал до мозга костей. Мира. Колчак был военным до мозга костей, а... And that's it. I hope you found some new and interesting expressions or idioms that you now can start using and you liked all of them. You can find all of them in the separate document on my passion page and also there you will find a little test like when we use them in what situations so you can go you can click on the link under the video and you can check yourself how you understood these idioms and how you remembered them thank you very much for watching subscribe to my channel and learn russian with me